Uh, up next, we have Dan, and Dan's our senior Agile evangelist in the JIRA team. He has a tremendous passion for Agile and wants nothing more for everyone in this room to start using it. So using his years of Agile and JIRA experience, he's going to share us his top lessons. Welcome, Dan. Thank you. Um, I'm Dan Radigan. Um, I've been tracking issues for about 20 years in my career. Um, built two uh, bug trackers, had been working on a various um, numbers of issue trackers throughout my career, um, and have been working with JIRA specifically for about six years. Um, for any of you who remember uh, 313 many moons ago, um, that was my first uh, experience with JIRA. So over the years, um, using JIRA, but also other systems, I've come through to learn there are sort of key tenets about how to make issue tracking um, a stronger culture within your organization, whatever process you use. I like to refer to issue tracking as understanding um, the flow of work through your organization and how you can maximize that um, to bring more value to how you manage projects and engineering um, within your group. So, The first thing I'd like to, to talk about is that, you know, the Agile Manifesto calls out individuals and interactions over processes and tools as the first point. And I think that's really key in how we build and structure our teams and our workflow. So um, many of you have seen um, this type of diagram. It's out of the workflow designer in JIRA, very standard uh, software development workflow where uh, you, know, you have work that's in your backlog, it moves to in progress, um, out to code review, and then finally to closed. And newer JIRA admins tend to think about these experiences as a flow of states, where really it's about how people interact with one another. The misnomer in workflow is that it's really not about work. Um, it's about people working together in a structured process. So, when I always coach teams through, well, how do I build a workflow? It's a common question that comes from JIRA administrators, and it really comes down to who are the people in your organization that are a part of that issue lifecycle? Bring them together, um, understand their concerns, understand how they want to work together. What is the flow? And, and in many cases, you can start from a common um, workflow, like the one we showed before, but a large part of the process is understanding each person's needs so that they get their input into the workflow and everybody understands how to work together. And then there's just the task of translating that into JIRA um, so that it's more about people and less about process. Because when you understand the right concerns from people, you find yourself in the right process. And lastly, um, when we think about the definition of done, um, oftentimes we think of that as what is the final output. But really, there's a series of transitions that happen in every workflow, and there's a, a definition of done that happens with each transition. So an example, in progress to code review, common transition for software teams. What is the condition of done that allows you to transition from in progress to code review? Is it that the code's written? Is it that it's checked in? Is it that it's built? Has test looked at it? And making sure that each person in the workflow understands their preconditions and their post conditions makes the workflow more effective. And lastly, I always like to say workflow is the repeatable part of your culture. Um, it's the part that allows your culture to scale within a team, within an office, within multiple offices around the world. As you build your workflow, you scale your culture. And always center workflow around people, not tools. Second tip, um, less is more. Um, JIRA is an amazingly powerful system. It can do lots of things. Um, always start slowly. So one of the things I always see with uh, new instances,
People love fields. Fields can do amazing things. They can track all sorts of different metadata about issues and, and part, be part of your workflow. But many of you may have a create issue screen that started like this. And then stuff got added, and stuff got added, and stuff got added. Um, how many of you have worked with a screen like this? So it, it's one of these things, like we always start with good intentions and somebody says, hey, you know, we found this bug and like if we just had this one piece of metadata, it'd really transform our business, can you add it? And that conversation happens over and over and over and then you find yourself in an experience where it's like you're filing a bug but it's almost like you're submitting your taxes for the year because there's so many fields, nobody knows what they mean. So at worst you get no data and it, at, at best, you get no data, and at worst, you get um, bad data. So we want to optimize fields for user users. And when you're a JIRA admin and somebody says, hey, can we add a particular field, ensure that it has business value. Push the, the requester to say, why does this make a difference in your workflow? Help them understand that the cost of adding that field is worth um, the additional user, user pain. Likewise, place fields in order. Don't put the summary at the bottom and the description at the top. Um, fields don't always have to be on the create screen. You can add them within your workflow. So if you want to have code reviewer in the workflow, put it when you transition to code review, not on the create screen, because the creator doesn't know who the code reviewer is. Um, you can also purge old fields, hide them from screens. If the business isn't using them anymore, take them out. Um, and then lastly, Jira's got a REST API. If you've got an application, you can have that application connect to Jira, pump in all the state information that developers need so that users don't have to do things like find logs, take screenshots of uh, configuration screens, have the application talk directly to Jira or use a tool like Jira Capture that allows you to take screenshots and input web application data inside of Jira. Um, how many of you are program or project managers? Okay, quite a few. So shared objects are your job. Um, shared objects are those entities in Jira like dashboards, filters, wallboards. Be the champion of those entities for your team. Don't, um, don't let people necessarily create copies of the, the, the project dashboard. Be the champion to create it, listen to your users, make changes so that you become the source of truth for your program. And you always point people to that particular dashboard because that dashboard becomes the source of truth for your program. As you create, as people create more, it can become confusing of, hey, whose view is correct? If you're, the, if you're the program or project manager, drive that change within your organization. How many are JIRA admins in the room? Cool, quite a few. So this one is for you especially. Um, I have seen a number of JIRA instances across the, uh, the world, and every user's experience is a mix of Atlassian and a mix of, uh, of you. And part of your role within the organization is helping people have great experiences. So to put it directly, um, each end user's experience is a partnership between Atlassian and the local JIRA admin. And as, as many people in your organization will use JIRA, you may have engineering teams, IT teams, uh, marketing teams, they will have different experiences in JIRA. And as you build new experiences in JIRA, whether it's a new workflow, a new custom field, a new um, plugin that comes into JIRA, you'll release that out to your audience. Take the time to listen. Understand what their pain points are so that you can learn from their experience. You know, if people are having trouble with too many fields or not understanding what, what these fields mean, can, can you make changes there? Or, hey, I need a new project, or how do I get more out of my Agile board? 
um, those key learnings then go back into your JIRA instance so that you can build new technology and new experiences to grow the adoption of JIRA to make issue tracking a more efficient um, process within your organization. And for some of you, you may know the JIRA issue collector. It's a great way to get feedback about um, your JIRA instance. Make it easy for users of JIRA to log issues in JIRA about JIRA. Um, there's sort of two pieces of feedback of, you know, I need a new project or a new custom field or something added, but also you want to get the feedback of this is hard or how do I extend or how can I make this easier so that people feel, um, feel like they can grow and, and be within JIRA. How many people are on software teams? Quite a few. So one of the things I always like to remind folks of is that teams that work well together deliver better. And having a shared understanding of your project landscape helps make <coughs> decisions easier and the team's culture stronger. <coughs> in Agile in particular, we talk about this self-organizing team where you'll have different skill sets. And strong teams are made of diverse people that have different skill sets, but they bring a consistent set of priorities to each decision. They understand their market, they understand their landscape, they understand the issues that are around that landscape, but they all sort of make decisions the same way so that design will approach um, the customer the same way that engineering, that product does, because you're working together, you're making decisions together. So I always advocate, bring the team in when you're planning. Have those discussions transparently so that people understand not only what the decision was made, but why it was made, how the group made that collective decision. Jira Agile and Plan Mode is a great way to do that but also um, the detail view in JIRA. Um, this was new in JIRA 6. You can see on the left-hand side, there's a listing of issues, and on the right-hand side, there's a pane that you can work with the issue. And what's really cool is that as you're triaging a set of issues on the left-hand side, if you need to jump back to an earlier issue, that's easy to do. You don't have to go back through list view to do that. So you've got detailed views for your issues, but then you also have um, an easy way to scan through um, the set that you're triaging. Do great things. I think everybody here um, wants to do great things at work. Um, you know, we want to build great products. We want to do things that truly um, change our landscape. And to do anything truly great, courage always dictates turning your back on everything that's good. There's so many things in the world we could do. The question really is, is what should we do and what are we called to do? How many people are product owners? Okay, got a couple. So I wanna spend a little bit of time on this chart. Um, for those of you that that may know, this is what we call the cumulative flow diagram. And what the, this does is that it, it aggregates the number of issues in a particular state um, over a period of time. And this is, um, I've just got the to-do state from the inception of the product um, all the way to current day. And basically what I'm measuring is the growth of the backlog over time. So we can see early on that the product started small, the product started tight, and then somewhere about 2011, a new product donor came in and said, hey, we need to shrink the backlog, we need to focus what we're doing, we need to really realign our priorities. So you'll see a little bit of a dip, and then you see the long climb up. As the product gained more and more adoption, more and more users had feedback on, hey, we should add this, we should add that. And the backlog became much, much, much bigger, up to about 2,000 issues. And 
the challenge then comes is I get a number of questions from, from product owners of, hey, like, how do I manage my backlog? How do I triage issues more effectively? How do I keep pace? And the answer is you close issues. Um, you align your backlog with your roadmap. And closing issues doesn't necessarily mean that they're gone, that they're deleted, or that you can't come back to them. It's just bringing your reality of where your roadmap is in line with your backlog. And as you move these issues from an open state to a resolved state, it communicates to the business what the priorities are. B, it helps a product owner more efficiently triage through their backlog. And C, keeps the stakeholders aware of where the product is going. So using things like components, labels, you can, cl you can close issues, create a custom resolution called not in scope, so they're easy to find, um, but then tag like components, labels, and other things so that you can find them. So as you're doing new research, you can search back through these issues to see, hey, has our, are our priorities right? Has, is our roadmap right? Mine the data for customer info. Um, but don't necessarily hold yourself hostage by all these issues that aren't on your medium to long-term roadmap. You're not necessarily bringing yourself extra value by having more issues open. It just makes your job harder. So again, we can use JQL, Jira's query language. We can run all kinds of searches um, inside of these closed issues um, to make sure that um, they're not lost. So lastly, um, a couple of key tips um, to really unleash your Jira. Um, my favorite, keyboard shortcuts. How many of you use keyboard shortcuts within Jira? Nothing will transform your use of JIRA more than keyboard shortcuts. Um, whether you're triaging issues, creating issues, editing issues, jumping between dashboards and agile boards, the keyboard shortcuts really will open up new speed and new workflows for you in JIRA. And it all starts with the question mark key. Um, as long as you're not in a text field like description where um, JIRA is accepting keyboard input, the keyboard shortcuts are active. And then question mark brings up a dialog that's got all of the tips and tricks. Um, a couple of them that I find cool, um, if you're a JIRA admin, the period key is your gateway to all of JIRA admin and the workflow um, tips and an issue. So you can press period and then start typing workflows, and then it'll bring you straight to the workflows the workflow screen, or you type issue types, it'll bring you to the issue type screen. For those of you that are triaging issues, J and K as the back and forward um, to go through a set of issues, um, and then C for create, E for edit. Um, not having to use the mouse really sort of, for me, it, it tripled my uh, speed within the product. And then lastly, um, for those of you who have seen the What's New dialog, along the bottom, there is a subscribe to get JIRA tips, tricks, and uh, product updates. Um, please sign up. We send a once a month how-to um, tips on JIRA to get more out of the product, um, software development tips. It's a great way to stay connected um, with the product so that um, as we release new stuff, you're the first to find out, but we also do um, tips and tricks that have been in the product just to raise um, awareness and adoption within the, uh, within the tools. And with that, um, thank you for spending some of your Thursday afternoon with me. If we have time for questions, happy to take a few. Thanks, Dan. So we don't have time for live questions, um, but you know, Confluence questions is still available. Dan will also be outside if you guys have any questions for him. So definitely go look for him outside. Um, thank you so much. So we'll have a last talk in 10 minutes. Thanks, everyone.